Not going to lie, this one's going to be hard. So I'm going to warn you ahead of time. This video is going to be about the death of a child. Viewer discretion is always advised, but I feel this story needs to be told. Judith Barcy was an actress, but a lot of people don't know who she is. You might know her voice though, if you have watched A Land Before Time and All Dogs Go to Heaven that is. She was the voice of Ducky in A Land Before Time and Anna Marie in All Dogs Go to Heaven. She was growing as a child star, but behind the scenes, her life was pain and fear. Then it was tragically cut short on July 28, 1988, when she was 10 years old. Yosef Barsi was a young man who fled his homeland of Hungary in 1956. I don't know exactly how old he was because some articles about him say he was 19, while others say he was 24, so we'll just say he was in his 20s. Yosef himself never knew his father. He was born illegitimate in a time where that would get you bullied. He would end up in France first, marrying another Hungarian refugee where he had two children, and with that wife, he was abusive. Yosef had a drinking problem and was a mean drunk, but his wife stood by him for a while at least because she moved with him to New York in 1964. She stayed with him for five years putting up with abuse and rage until she finally had enough. She moved to Arizona, but Yosef wasn't one to let someone he thought he loved go. No, he followed her to Arizona where they reconciled. He promised to change and to be a better man but he only got a bit more violent. His abuse amped up when he threw a cast iron skillet at her. Yosef would get a divorce and then would move to California. That was where he met Maria. Maria was also a Hungarian immigrant who left Hungary after the 1956 communist coup. Maria was a waitress at a restaurant where Hungarian immigrants would meet up. She was also a woman who suffered abuse as a child, but Maria had made her way to Los Angeles to become an actress. At the time, Yosef was working as a plumbing contractor, and he came in one day, placed $100 down on one of her tables, and this caused her to be attracted to him because of his forceful attitude. The two would marry soon after. Maria would give birth to their only daughter on June 6, 1978. That daughter is the focal point of this video, but I needed to go through the past of her parents so that it becomes clear the events that are to come. Judith Ava Barsi, as I said, was born on June 6, 1978. Not long after her birth, at age 5, Maria began to groom her to become an actress. Because Maria had failed, she felt her child had a better opportunity than she ever did. It isn't known if Judith wanted to act. What is known was she was an adorable little girl with a sweet and happy personality. Though Judith's odds were still low, she still was discovered at a skating rink. She began to do commercials. Because she was a small girl, she was mistaken for a three-year-old. In fact, in her entire short life, she was never taller than 3 foot 8. She ended up starring in over 70 commercials and had guest appearances in television shows. Shows like Punky Brewster. Hi there, what's your name? Anna. Hi, Anna. Knott's Landing. Uh, and a chocolate milkshake. Okay. Uh, Make that large uh, too. Okay. Oh, Cheers. and the love boat. Did you lose your radio, Santa? Who are you? I'm a Christmas angel. She also starred in television movies like Kids Don't Tell and Do You Remember Love? But all of this started in 1984 with a miniseries called Fatal Vision.
With all her work in television, it wasn't long before she was cast in movies. In Hollywood in the 80s, you knew you made it when you were in movies. Judith's first film role was in a film called Eye of the Tiger. From there, she would go on to be in Jaws the Revenge, which is the worst Jaws movie. But hey, she got to work with Michael Caine, so that's a plus. But she is best known for a role where you don't see her face. Just heard her voice. She is best known for the role of Ducky in The Land Before Time. Because of that role, Don Bluth, the director of The Land Before Time, would cast her as the role of Anne-Marie in All Dogs Go to Heaven. Don loved Judith. He loved her maturity, her intelligence, and her ability to follow verbal instruction. He had plans to use her extensively in a lot of his animated films. To everyone who met her, all seemed okay. To them, she had a loving family who supported her, and she was a happy-go-lucky child. But this wasn't the case. Behind the bubbly personality was a child who was suffering. Her father, Yosef, wasn't happy with his life, and he had become jealous of his daughter and paranoid of her success. This led him to fall back into the same trappings that ruined his first marriage. He was arrested three times for driving under the influence. After these, he did stop drinking, but his abuses didn't stop. They got worse and worse, but Maria never pressed charges against him, even though she should have because he was suicidal and homicidal. He threatened to kill his wife and child and himself on multiple occasions. In fact, before Judith went to shoot Jaws of Revenge, he leaned down and whispered in her ear that if she didn't come home, he would slit her throat. He didn't just say it either. He had a kitchen knife to her throat when he said it. At a party in their four bedroom home, Judith was the center of attention and this pissed Yosef off. During that party, he followed Judith in the kitchen and screamed in her face that she was a damned little brat. Yosef would build an iron spiked fence around the home to keep the neighbors out. The abuse Judith and Maria suffered began to manifest itself to the point where Judith's agent, Ruth Hansen, would notice changes in Judith. Judith's mental state was beginning to deteriorate. She began plucking out her hair, her eyebrows, and her eyelashes. She began to even pluck out her cat's whiskers. When Ruth, her agent, asked why, Judith confided in her that things at home were not good, so Ruth sent her to a child psychologist. The psychologist found that Judith was verbally, mentally, and physically abused. The psychologist would tell Maria that she needed to file a report, which Maria, with very little option, did. But Child Protective Services never showed up. No one showed up to help Judith at all. Maria, for her part, was seeing the writing on the wall. The man she fell in love with turned out to be a monster, but she was too afraid to leave him. Feeling that if she did, he would kill them both. If CPS intervened, she felt that he would blame Maria and he would kill Maria. As much as he was abusive to Judith, he was highly possessive of her. Maria, though, would buy a place where she could take Judith for the day and then return to their regular home at night. Ruth Hansen was also on Maria to get out of the home for the safety of her child. Whether it is true or not, Maria told Ruth that it would be okay because Yosef has stayed that he was going to agree to a divorce and move out. There were divorce papers signed, but they were never filed because they didn't get a chance to be filed. On July 25th, 1988, Judith was asleep in her room when her father entered. He shot her while she slept. She never woke up. She died in her sleep. Maria, hearing the noise, came to the hall, only to be shot herself. For two days, Yosef wandered the house alone, often in a drunken state. At one point, Ruth called the house because Judith missed a meeting. Yosef reassured her, telling her that he had planned on leaving and that he just wanted time to say goodbye to his little girl. On July 27th, Yosef poured gasoline on the bodies of his daughter and wife. 
then all over the house, and he set it on fire. He went into the garage, and then he shot himself. All Dogs Go to Heaven would be Judas' final film. It came out after her death, which makes it really hard to watch, knowing the voice actress for Anna Marie had died a year earlier. But the film was dedicated to her memory, as well as the final song in the film, Love Survives. She was buried in Forest Lawn Memorial Cemetery, next to her mother. Not sure where Yosef is buried, in fact, that is a mystery. But he didn't deserve to be with his family anyways. At first, Judith's grave was unmarked. But sometime in the 90s, a marker was placed. It reads Concrete Angel, with the iconic quote from Ducky. Yep, yep, yep. While this song isn't about Judith, Martine McBride has a song called Concrete Angel about a little girl who suffers abuse and dies. I have to mention it because of how eerily similar it is to Judith. So I wanted to wait until the end to make comments about this story. I felt with how serious it was, I would make too many side comments and it would take away from Judith's story and life. While I did make some offhanded comments, there was a lot more that I could take. But there were so many people who failed Judith. Child Protective Services, the police, at least her agency tried to help. And though her mother didn't help, she was not at fault for it. She was abused and people who are in that situation know the fear that Maria went through. I do not blame her for anything that happened. I want to make that clear. I don't blame Maria for what happened. She was as much a victim as Judith was. The monster Yosef was cannot be understated. He had a history of abusiveness. He was a drunk and an asshole. He thought he was a big man by targeting those who were defenseless. How little of a dick do you have to be jealous of your daughter? Seriously, this fuck was jealous of somebody he should have been proud of. I hope he rots in the ground. But Judith lives on in Ducky, Anna Marie, and the characters she played throughout her short life. I know that isn't much, but that thought is somewhat comforting.